Cursor UI, should you use it? Basics, benefits, and what I think after one month of switching from Vim about Cursor. First thing you need to know, it's just a fork of VS Code. So everything is very familiar. If you've used it before, shortcuts the same and everything, interface, no problem. Now there's four key features with Cursor that you're going to get. The first one is autocomplete, basically the same as Copilot. As you're typing, it's making suggested changes for you. In my opinion, this is just pure win because they're usually quite good and accurate. So if I go to my V project here, I can just start typing that I wanna change this link color and it will auto-complete like so, predicting that I've already changed this one, so I'll change this one next. And then I can also start typing a new line and it will format for me. I'm just hitting tab to make these changes. Now, let's go back and continue with chat, feature number two. So chat allows me to select part of my code and make changes. So I can say, select this and then say, change the link color to purple and it will do that for me going through line by line. Now, the benefit of this is it will basically make these changes really fast for you without an explanation. And the con is if I select a large file, you'll see it will go through just one line at a time. So I can say change to use Chakra UI component library, and it will kind of run through, which becomes a problem if you're working on bigger files. So I'll just accept that for now. And we can see the next problem with edit slash generate. So when I save that, it hasn't installed this library, obviously. Uh, so if I just go back, then I can see how we can start using chat. So chat command L says, ask anything. You can ask questions about the file. And I forgot to say with generate and edit, you also select your model. Quad 3.5 is solid, but you can also use the GPT 4.0, uh, a lot of people like it more, but basically I can say the same instructions. However, it will also give me an explanation. So use Chakra UI and write basically quite similar code, refactor everything, and also tell me I, what I need to install. So I can just go over to my terminal, install that, and then I have to click apply here. So a couple of extra steps to uh, basically make those changes when I'm using chat. Uh, so if I save that now, basically it has worked without an error, still doesn't look great. So I can go again and I can do either chat or generate and I can just say, make it look a lot better. This is one of my favorite features. You don't have to be specific about what you want. It will just kind of improve if you're not a designer, the look and feel of your UI. So that's quite cool. We have some CSS that comes with Vite out of the box. So if we just delete that, it should look in theory better. And then I can just say again, it's not full width, please change. And then as you can see, well, if you're running this multiple times, it has to go through one line at a time to make the changes. So the time can add up. Still didn't quite work. I think I have another container on this somewhere. Oh, here it is, more CSS. So if I just delete, then here we go. All right. So obviously this looks way better than our starter function. And we did that in about 30 seconds. I think with these new code editors, you really gotta be on top of things. Understand everything that's going on, even if you're not using these tools yourselves, it's your responsibility as a developer. And it's easier than ever to build an AI powered app or business. So I really wanna suggest you check out the free AI for business builders guide. It gives you tactics and strategies to grow your projects into successful ventures using current modern AI. It covers the four levels of using LLMs from prompt engineering to using APIs, even to AI agents and when to use each one. My favorite part is the prompt engineering because it helps you understand the difference between few shot, iterative and different forms of prompting just to get better results on the first time around. So for example, you can add an actual sample component to your cursor rules, which allows you to get hopefully first shot outputs on whatever components you're creating next. Understanding iterative prompting and using that with the composer, it helps you get closer to your ideal output faster. With a few tips you can get from this super quick free download, you can move lightning fast as a solopreneur or a small team for that side project or million dollar business you're trying to build. Thanks to HubSpot for providing this free resource. You can download it below. Uh, let's now talk about the final feature, which is the composer. So on any file, I can hit Command I, and this is a multi-file editor that can understand everything. And I can also do this in both edit and generate, where I can hit at and I can reference other files, folders, specific functions in my code to say something like this. So I can make sure app.js is selected and I can say create a new component in the style of app.jsx that allows a user to log in 
and import and display in app.jsx. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. It'll give me an explanation. It will automatically apply my code and it will go across multiple files. So this obviously takes the longest. It has to read all your code and similar. And in my experience, I'll just say this, uh, GPT-01, I've found to be a little bit slower than um, the Claude uh, Sonnet model. So I can say, generate a new login component, import it and display in app JSX. So as that generates, as we can see, you know, Claude was faster. It's going to create my file and it'll show me the changes on each file right here in the tabs. And I can actually just accept everything and it will even save the files for me. So go to login back to home. So look what we already have. All right. Those are the basic features. Now, other features that are interesting and cool cursor rules. You create a file in the root of your directory. And I found this cursor rule maker. You can just search for it on Google quite useful because you can basically give it your stack and it'll give you some starter rules. Now, I think this is a little bit overkill what it's gonna give me, you'll see, um, because it is super detailed, but it's at least a good starting point for formatting your code, name and corrections, uh, conventions, etc. And one specific time this really helped me is when I was um, creating HTML templates. I added a cursor rule to not use display flex because it doesn't display in Gmail. And it basically, I didn't have to type that into every prompt. So pretty useful. Then there's art artifacts. They're kind of like just deployed files through cursor that it can read and write. That's pretty useful for long running, you know, things you want to reference. You can generate like an entire spec for an app and save it as a file, deploy it. Uh, but you can also just save that in your local directory. So I haven't used these too much. Now, getting back to cursor, here's what I like in general. So the autocomplete, just pure win. It's really good I've found for creating new components like we just did with the composer. And there's no reason really not to use it if you're creating a new function because you can have a starting point that you start to change. Another thing it's really great for is transforming data. So I can feed in like sample JSON and say, here's how I want the output to look. Previously, you had to go through and say, this property should be this, this should be this. So really, really good at saving you time there. You can just paste in the whole JSON. And in general too, you can just say improve the styling. It doesn't look good. If you're more of a backend developer, not a design person, it can help you make your app look a lot better without having to pay a designer. Things I don't like, it slows down a lot. Editing big files can even create some bugs I've found on larger files or stop running halfway through. And then it also gets very slow. And I should also mention if you're using the composer to edit like a bunch of files and save everything, it's more likely to create bugs and certain things won't me mesh together. I've found 100% of the time. So just be careful with it on larger repos. But in summary, if you just keep files small and think of it as not doing everything for you, but helping you, it is really great. So let's try to build a full app quickly just with Composer and see what happens. So back over to my repo here. Let's go in to Composer, reset it, and then say what we want to build. So I want to build an app where a user can upload a customer list with emails and find social media influencers based on an API search, right? Okay, so quick summary, I described what I want my app to do. The user should upload a CSV of customers and you can find which of your customers have large social media accounts. So I've defined the input output. The actual server logic for now will be mock code because I haven't set up this API. And then I'm gonna use Firebase, Google login, and have multiple pages. So let's just see what it comes up with. This is a very broad input. So let's see how well it does with the composer. Okay, so that took about 30 seconds. Let's accept all and see what happens. So I still need to install React Router DOM. It gave me that instruction. So I did that and let's just take a look. So homepage not looking too great. Of course we can go in and control shift F for this string and then we can chat to improve it. So I said, make it look better and have a call to action. Let's see what happens. Uh, it doesn't look great still, but we can keep iterating. You know, actually, I guess there's kind of a bug here because it doesn't seem to be displaying the heading here. I see. Interesting. All right. Well, we can get started, upload a file, and you can see some of the styles are a bit off. 
at least this logic works. I have a login here. It doesn't look super great. We can search. We have this search page and we have a search results page, which will show the results like so. So obviously it will take some iteration to actually make this look real, but as a starting point, it's not bad. And then of course I can go into the composer and just say, Except all, there we go. Now this is looking pretty interesting. Actually it looks like it could be a real app. And now it's displaying a table and uh, we can actually view profile. And yeah, honestly, we add our server logic and this is uh, not too far from something solid. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that video preview of Cursor. If you haven't tried it, why not? Leave a comment what you think about it and check out the AI for business builders guide by HubSpot. Shout out to HubSpot for sponsoring the video. In any case, I will see you soon. I'm going to do a full build with Cursor, I think, in the next video. So I'll see you there if you're interested. Catch you guys later.